These are some of the physiologic side effects of spinal anesthesia, as well as the mechanisms by which they happen. In the cardiac system, you have a sympathetic block, which can lead to venous and arterial dilation. Venous dilation will decrease your preload, and arterial dilation will decrease your afterload and your systemic vascular resistance. Both of these can cause hypotension. If you have a high spinal block reaching levels T1 to T4, you could block the cardiac accelerator fibers, which can result in bradycardia. If you have venous pooling, you can have decreased right atrial stretch, which can also lead to bradycardia. In the respiratory system, spinals are usually well tolerated, but if you have intercostal or abdominal muscle paralysis, you can have breathing difficulties in patients with severe respiratory disease. If you have abdominal muscle paralysis, you can have a decrease in your vital capacity, especially in obese or pregnant patients. And if you're very high BMI, uh, greater than 30, you can have a decrease in your vital capacity by 20 to 30%. If you have a very high spinal, you can have phrenic nerve impairment, which of course would affect your diaphragm, your diaphragm movement and impair your breathing. And in severe hypotension, your brain respiratory center will be hypoperfused, and that can cause respiratory arrest. In the kidney, spinal anesthesia can decrease your renal perfusion. It's associated with urinary retention, although causation has not been proven. In your GI tract, because the spinal anesthesia does a sympathetic blockade, you'll have unopposed parasympathetic activity, which leads to gut hyperperistalsis. So your gut is moving faster than it normally does. This can lead to nausea and vomiting. You'll also have decreased cardiac output and decreased hepatic blood flow. Hypotension can lead to the chemoreceptor trigger zone being hypoperfused, which can also cause nausea and vomiting.